Welcome back to CBS Sports HQ. The big board is out. Ryan Wilson's final draft player rankings ahead of the 2023 NFL Draft this week. Alabama quarterback Bryce Young tops the charts, followed by three defensive players. They are bookended by Ohio State quarterback C.J. Stroud. The only offensive skill player in the top ten is running back B. John Robinson. Three cornerbacks also ranked inside the top ten. All right, so let's discuss the big board with the author, NFL draft expert Ryan Wilson, and we'll call him the grumpy editor, senior NFL writer Pete Prisco. Ryan, uh, just a point of clarification here. There's the ranking, and then there's another number that's there. What does that number represent? Uh, those are just the grades that I signed and where I think they would go historically. So I think I had Bryce Young as first round, fourth overall pick, and that's compared to the best quarterback you can make in the history of football, whether that's Tom Brady or whomever that may be. So that's sort of the how I measure these guys and grade them as we go through the process uh, over the course of September uh, up until this very moment. I still got a couple more names to add. All right. So just, just so there's no confusion based on like historical rankings is kind of what we're looking at in terms of that second number. I have that right. You got it. Okay. Pete, Bryce Young, number one overall, your last mock had CJ number one, Bryce at number two. Ryan has CJ at five. Now, how do you feel about this order? Well, I think when you rank the players, I think uh, I would understand Bryce Young being ahead of CJ Stroud. I have him ahead of him as well. In fact, Bryce Young is the best pure passer in this draft class. I don't think there's any question about that. Uh, if he was three inches taller, he'd be a slam dunk first round. If he was 20 pounds heavier, he'd be a slam dunk first player pick. But he's not. He's not. And that's the concern. Will he hold up in the National Football League? We haven't seen this ever. Fran Tarkington was five foot ten and 195 pounds, but that was a long long, long time ago. We do not see quarterbacks this size go first overall, and that's the concern. As a player, he's fun. He doesn't have a great arm, by the way. It's a good arm. It's not a great arm, but he is a fun player to watch. i just concerned about the size. I understand why people have number one. He's not my number one, but I understand it. Yeah, I don't disagree with much of what Pete said. He, he's spot on, and historically, you can't find Bryce Young on an NFL roster as a face of the franchise quarterback. And I, I'll tell the story that I've told before. I was talking to a general manager back in the fall, and he said, how many quarterbacks in the NFL are like Bryce Young? And the answer is zero. How many like Will Levis? The answer is a lot. And that's what you're banking on. It's easy for me to say I love Bryce Young as the draft analyst. I don't think I'll get fired if I, if I miss on that one. But as the general manager, you could very quickly lose your job if you make the wrong selection at the quarterback position. So Pete's right. Like, Bryce Young is – the best passer in this class, the, the fewest flaws. If he were 6'2", we wouldn't even be having this conversation. We'd be talking about him like we talked about Joe Burrow and Trevor Lawrence. But he's not. He's 5'10 and an eighth. He's not going to play at 204, which is what he weighed at the combine. Probably play close to 185, 190. And you just, fingers crossed, hope he stays healthy. Um, at the end of the day, though, Jeremy, hope isn't usually a good plan in the NFL. But it's just hard to pass on all the good things he did uh, at Alabama those two years. And, of course, he would be the second quarterback listed uh, under six feet to be drafted in the first round in the modern era. Kyler Murray, of course, is the other. Uh, Ryan, you've got Jalen Carter as the top defensive player with Will Anderson at number three. And the draft positions, I mean, you've got them kind of equal there historically. So obviously, the margins are very slim here. Yeah, no, that's right. And the thing with Jalen Carter is, solely speaking football, Jeremy, he might be the best player in this draft, quarterback or otherwise, but we have to take into consideration the off-field stuff that is going to cloud uh, where he ends up going. He doesn't get out of the top ten, I don't think, uh, and we, we know about the, the, the tragic accident down in Athens, Georgia, where two people lost their lives, but after that, he had to leave the, the combine, and then a few weeks after that, he showed up nine pounds heavy for his pro day, and you're just not sure which Jalen Carter you're getting. On the field, he is lights out. And I say it all the time, go back and look at that 2021 team. He was the best defender on that unit that had five guys going the first round a year ago. So if you can get him locked in and focused on football, we might be saying two or three years from now, this guy should have been the first overall pick because he's so dominant. He's Chris Jones. That's who he is. He's Chris Jones of the Chiefs, and he is the best defensive player in this class. It's up to the team that drafts him to surround him with good players uh, who can help guide him. He needs guidance. Look, he wasn't always the hardest worker at Georgia. Everybody knows that. So you talk to the coaching staff and the people in the league, and they all say that. He didn't work hard all the time. But, boy, if you get him in the right situation with the right coaches, and that's why coaches are paid their money. Get these guys playing at a high level. I think he will. <laughs> I love him. He's a better prospect 
than Will Anderson in my mind. And by the way, I like Wilson from Texas Tech more than I like Will Anderson as well. All right, so that's the defensive players. Let's talk about some of the offensive skill players. We have three wide receivers in the mix inside the 10 to 20 grouping on the big board. Six of the top seven receiving leaders since 2020 were drafted after the first round. So in your draft experience, Ryan, how significant is it to have this kind of talent inside the top 20? Yeah, this class is actually pretty light on wide receivers compared to recent draft classes. You talk about the Justin Jefferson class. He went late. Obviously, our guy Rick Spillman drafted him after the Eagles took Jalen Rager, which I'm sure they still feel like it was a mistake. And then we've had the Jamar Chases go. He went early, and he's been a game changer. With these guys, you don't see those sorts of players. But Jackson Smith and Jigba is going to play inside the slot. He ran a 4-5, but he's incredibly quick in short areas, and I think that's what makes him so enticing. He probably goes in the top 15 range. Then you see Quentin Johnson there out of TCU. Longer wide receiver, has had some focus drops at times, but he can beat you at all three levels, and he's one of the few big wide receivers in this draft class. And finally, Zay Flowers. I've heard from teams there's a chance he ends up being wide receiver one. Uh, I love everything he does. He's a little undersized at 5'9", but a lot of his game in open space reminds me of Antonio Brown, and he did it in Boston College with zero help around him, and those guys, in my mind, have the best chance to be the three wide receivers that end up going around one. Yeah, I think you're missing one. I think you're missing the best receiver in this class. That's Jordan Addison from USC. Uh, I know Addison's only about 175 pounds. Uh, reminds me of Devontae Smith a little bit. And all Devontae Smith did last year was uh, set a single-season receiving record for catches for the Philadelphia Eagles. I think Addison has that t same type of ability. I don't love Quinton Johnson. Uh, that one, I think, is a concern. Uh, there's a lot of focus, like Ryan mentioned, on does he catch the ball very well. And if you're a big receiver who doesn't run very well because he didn't time very well. You have to win those 50-50 balls. I think that's a concern with him. I think he has a chance to drop a little bit. Uh, keep an eye on uh, Zay Flowers. He played with bad quarterbacks and put up big numbers. I love him. Uh, I think those guys are the top of this draft in terms of the wide receiver position. Okay, so there's a trio of wide receivers inside the top 20, but we then get three tight ends inside the top 30. Which of these three that are inside the top 30 here, Pete, Michael Mayer, Dalton Kincaid, or Luke Musgrave, has the most upside for you? Michael Mayer. I don't think there's any question about that. I think he's the most well-rounded tight end of the class. He can block. Uh, he's capable of getting down the field. He's a physical guy. Remember, they called him Baby Gronk for a time at Notre Dame. There's a reason for that. And by the way, he did not play with very good quarterbacks when he was at Notre Dame either. I think this kid's best football is in front of him. He gets with the right team. If I'm the Green Bay Packers picking at 15 and Michael Mayer's on the board, I'm taking Michael Mayer. The best thing for a young quarterback quarterback is a security blanket and a security blanket first and foremost is a good tight end that's what Michael Mayer would be I do like Kincaid I also like Sam Laporta from Iowa he's more of a receiving tight end when he runs his routes he's a guy who runs a lot like a wide receiver uh, but I like Mayer the most yeah and Sam Laporta came from that Iowa offense which also was non-existent I mean him and Zay Flowers basically had the same offenses to work with and, and make the most out of a little. Uh, but, Pete, I'm talking about Luke Musgrave out of Oregon State. Uh, he is a long, long tight end, and he is one of the fastest tight ends of this draft class, if not the fastest. Uh, he timed exceedingly well at the senior bowl practice. He was one of the fastest players in each of the three practices. He struggled with injuries late last year. He does have the occasional focus drop, but I think his best football is ahead of him. He is such a huge target, and the athleticism jumps off the screen. And when he's healthy, he's an absolute playmaker. You talk about Dalton Kincaid. He battles some health injuries as well. He's gotten the all-clear, as has Musgrave, who I think has a chance to be really good at the next level. I don't think he sticks to the first round necessarily, but I think as a top 30, top 40, top 50 guy, we could see three, four, five of these tight ends off the board, Jeremy, and I think all of them have a chance to be contributors uh, offensively, with the exception of being Dal uh, Darnell Washington, who's probably going to be a better blocker early on than receiver, which will lead Pete Prisco to say, make him a tackle and get it over with. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, uh, Kentucky quarterback Will Levis has fallen all the way to 42. That makes him a possible Friday pick. Uh, Ryan, before Pete blows his stack here, I'm going to let you go first. Uh, this was a guy who was once a top five guy in your mock drafts. Are even you surprised at how far he's fallen down the board? Well, I'm not surprised because I made the list. I am surprised at how poorly he played during the fall. I was expecting more out of it. And Pete will give you the litany of excuses as to why he didn't play as well as he should have. Pete might say something like, well, if he were at Alabama, he'd be starting. If he were at Alabama, he'd be playing tight end. So let's keep it real about where his prospects are. 
Look, there is so much to love physically about Will Levis. I have him going behind Hinton Hooker in the mock draft, and I have Hinton Hooker, ranked, Hinton Hooker ranked higher than him in this big board. So, Pete, sell me on Will Levis as being a top five pick and why he's going to change my franchise. Okay, well, he's big, he's strong, he's athletic, he's got a cannon for an arm, and he had Kentucky in the top 10 in 2021. <laughs> Think about that. Kentucky, they were in the top 10. Now let's move to the next year. He had Liam Cohn as his offensive coordinator in 2021. Rich Scangarello comes in as the offensive coordinator in 2022. They changed the entire offense. He's a terrible offensive coordinator. He's already been fired, by the way. The offense was a disaster. He had no wide receivers, no <laughs> offensive line, a running back who runs 4-7. He got shots in his foot and his and his shoulder five different times <laughs> during the season, and he still stood in there and made plays. It was a disaster last year. This is the Josh Allen hate all over again. Same venom, same nastiness, same type of uh, uh, disdain from the national media and the Twitter draft cult, and they will all be wrong again. Wow, Pete, I think you turned like five shades of red there. I don't know if I've seen you that animated in months. Wow, excellent. He was ready for that question, ready to sell us on Will Levis. Senior NFL writer Pete Prisco, NFL draft expert Ryan Wilson discussing Ryan's big board, his final draft rankings. You can check out the uh, list of the top 100 over on CBSSports.com. For more on the upcoming draft and the big board, check out the Pick 6 podcast. The latest episode features Ryan, Rick Spielman, and Emery Hunt discussing what teams should do with their first-round picks. Download and follow the Pick 6 wherever you get your podcasts.